From my humble perspective, I could have been real spiritual and done what we call a um, spiritual bypass, mm -hmm. or I could have gone deep into this. And you know what I did, right? <laughs> I, 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 I had no choice, okay? Sometimes when we're talking about things like authenticity and vulnerability, and 
honesty can feel real uncomfortable because it can be really unsafe, you know? And so I don't want to do a spiritual bypass with this, and I don't want to go light. One of the things I really recognize, not that I haven't before, but it was just brought home to me in doing this talk, is those of us that are in this teaching, what a responsibility we have in the world, to the world, to ourselves and to other people. Why? Because there's only oneness, yes. right? Yes. So what I, what I do impacts the entire world. That's kind of hard to wrap our minds around sometimes, right? Until you see spirit, until you see the evidence of your intention. So when we talk about seeing others, what's going to come to mind is the thing that Reverend Michelle has been talking about and teaching us for years, for as long as you've been here, okay? That's what's going to come to mind, not gossiping, not being unkind, not being judgmental, okay? And um, we hear it and we yeah, 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 okay, but, you know, I, I've done that, okay? I'm just saying, all right? But when we look at someone, when we're seeing, what are we looking for? What are we looking for? We're out in the world, we're not in, in the center, you know, we're not with center folks, we're out in the world, we're in our difficult families, what are we looking for? Are we able to see the God spark? Are we able to see the God spark, especially in somebody that might be doing you harm? Okay, I know I'm going far, I'm asking for a lot, I get it. Are we looking for a person's heart? Are we looking with eyes so that we can see their needs and maybe look past their faults, understanding that there's some kind of pain or trauma that caused that? What eyes are we looking with? Do we look with the eyes of separation, with the eyes of criticism, with the eyes of judgment, with the eyes of scorn, jealousy? I cannot tell you about the people in my life. I, I go to have a conversation with them and it's like, did you, what did she have that on for? You know, that really didn't work for her. I'm just saying she may be all of that, but how many times, okay? And you have to, like, catch that impulse to agree or disagree and maybe just breathe. Now, why is it important, the eyes that we're seeing with? Real simple. What you give out in the universe is what you get back. It may not come from the same place, but it is what you get back, okay? So it's not easy practicing this stuff. I'm not pretending. It's not easy practicing this stuff, okay? And let us make no mistake. We live in a physical universe where sometimes for different reasons, we are not safe. I will be the first to tell you, you have to take a different stance then, okay? But when we have the freedom of practicing the presence and seeing God in others, we need to do that because it contributes to our world, not just the world out there. It contributes something positive to our world. So how we see the eyes that we see with, really important. Now, being seen, mm, that brings up a whole other thing. What I am really aware of is that we're reticent to be seen because it's not safe lots of times. We've all had experiences. 
unfortunately where somebody said in some way, either through their actions or their actual words or whatever, that who we are or who we were being was not okay. And unfortunately, most of the time, those things are messed together. People are not able to separate who we really are from who we're being and how we're behaving in the moment. Okay? So, this is a really, a, a real clear way of living our teaching. Yes? And I know there's not a lot of us, but you know, it only takes like 10% to shift the energy. It only takes a small amount of us in the world to shift the energy. So, we don't like to be seen, we don't like to be vulnerable because we can be unsafe. Now, there are all different levels to this, okay? And boy, have we been experiencing this stuff in the past few years? I, I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> is it only me? Okay, just, just checking, because I don't want to go on to talk about something that you can't relate to, all right? So whether it's the wars, whether it's COVID and the shutdown, whether it's the racism, whether it's the, the um, uh, what do you call it? Anti-Semitism, anti people that are against gay folks, all of those things, it seems like it's just increasing exponentially. Is that my imagination? Yeah, it seems like it. Okay. And then, this, this idea that somebody is your enemy because they may be sick, they may not have on a mask, they may, may think of things differently than you do, they may have a different um, sexual orientation than you do. Reverend Michelle Leslie talked about we don't have to agree. We don't have to agree. But what we do want to be able to do I pray, is to respect other people and to know that they have a right to be who they are as long as they do no harm. I've had some challenges, me. I, I, there are things I don't agree with, okay? I do respect your right to be who you are. I do respect your right to do what you do. I'm not going to do the same thing that everybody else does. And I've had friends walk away. People I thought were a fool. People I thought were like friends that would never, could never leave. But they did. Okay? So we deal with this on a bunch of different levels. We deal with this on a world level. Right? We deal with this on a national level. We deal with this in our communities and in our families. And we deal with it on a personal level. The one thing we have control over is a personal level. So what happens is, if we're rejected in some way, if we're not accepted, if somebody judges us, if somebody decides that who we are is not okay, it impacts our ability to do so many things, to thrive, to be successful, to, to have a good sense of self, okay? If you work at a job and you work with someone and for whatever reason your boss doesn't like you or doesn't think that you're doing a good job or doesn't think that you're capable, that impacts your ability not only to make a living but to excel and to move forward and to grow, yes? So there are real consequences to these things, right? If you're in a loving relationship and you do something that somebody doesn't like, you're in danger of that relationship being severed. Rescue me if I'm wrong. And so what happens is we are not always forthcoming with the truth of who we are. We play roles, we wear masks, right? 
For what reason? In order to keep us safe. Because how many people have somebody in their lives that no matter how you mess up, they're there for you? I'm not saying they'll agree with you, but I'm saying they're there for you. Okay? I gotta tell you, make no mistake, if you are a person that has that, oh, what a gift. Because so many people don't. I'm telling you, the person that I thought would be there for me no matter what, mm. gone. Okay? This business of wearing masks, of not being our true selves because it's not always safe, is inundated in our society. You have businesses and corporations that use the media to sell a narrative about who they are that very often has absolutely nothing to do with who they really are, okay? But they sell an idea, they sell an ideal, they sell a dream, they sell a concept. And I gotta tell you, unfortunately, we don't do the research and we just buy it because we've been trained if it's on the news, if it's on the TV, if it's on the radio, it must be true. Now our logical minds think it's not, but that's how most of us respond. Sorry. True. That's how most of, most of us respond. And we also don't think about the fact that we're being programmed also. If you don't want the truth, I'm not the person to talk to. Come on. <laughs> In our everyday lives, we run up against things and we have to make a choice. Am I gonna be totally open, totally authentic, totally honest, or do I need to play it safe? Make no mistake when I tell you that yes, sometimes you need to play it safe. So we have to have wisdom. It would be lovely if we didn't. We're not there yet. <laughs> Anheuser-Busch hired a um, trans person to be a spokesperson. Their sales plummeted. They had no idea that that would happen. They thought they were doing a good thing. Common cabinet bent on a knee during the national anthem. He was suspended. I think he was eventually fired. People backed up, walked away from him. He was not cool, he wasn't okay anymore. Martin Luther King led boycotts, he led marches. He spoke against the Vietnam War. He was murdered, gone. Beautiful ideal, but gone. There are people who are living right now who are at real risk in the world. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just telling the truth. So this idea of being seen and how we manage it is really important. But here's the thing. In this teaching, we talk about the positive, constructive, uplifting, empowering principles and laws that we can use to guide us. But we have the absolute versus the relative. I don't hear people talk about that so much anymore, but it's really important that we're aware of the difference between the absolute and the relative. So it's spirit, right? in all its power and presence, and then it's our humanness, okay? There's theory, and then there's the application of that theory. 
and there's the ideal, and then there's reality. And that's what we have to navigate. We have to navigate between the two, understanding who we are. And if we're not clear on who we are, it is much more difficult. So it's difficult, but if we're not clear on who we are, it's much more difficult. So we have kingpins in this teaching, right? Principles that we can go to, principles that we can utilize that make things clear for us and empower us, an awareness of spirit, of the presence, yes? Love. I wonder how clear, how visceral, and how real my understanding of love is. And I'm just aware that it needs to be very clear. We have the creative process, and spirit expressing through us according to our beliefs, which allows us to co-create. And when we embark upon co-creation, there's a blueprint of spiritual laws that we can utilize. And intention influences our outcome no matter what. Our intention influences our outcome. So why be seen then? Why bother? Why go through it? Because one of the most basic human fundamental needs is belonging, is feeling valued, is experiencing friendship, is being loved, is connection. We need to be heard. We need to be recognized. We need to know that we matter. There isn't any one of us that doesn't. Okay? And to the extent that we receive those experiences, it determines the quality of our lives. So, we have to have a level of vulnerability in order to relate to people, in order to have a connection with people. We have to share ourselves in order to open that door to allow people to get to know us, to develop friendships, to develop relationships. There's just no other way. But how much vulnerability we allow is a choice. How can we be vulnerable and still be safe? Well, I sound like a broken record, but we have to be grounded in spirit. Grounded. You've heard me say it many times, we have to have a real relationship with spirit. That's what develops our faith. I have to know that when I sit and meditate, when I pray, when, when, when I, I have a fear and my heart cries out, then I'm heard and I get a response. And when I have an experience of that response, when I have an experience of things working out, then I'm building a relationship with spirit and I am deepening my faith. But if I don't have that, I'm even more lost. But I can tell you that something happens. Something happens when we open our when we take a risk, when we share ourselves, the energy literally shifts and it allows the possibility of a deeper connection and a deeper bond being created and trust between people. Have you ever experienced it? There's nobody in here that 
is married or in a relationship or that has children, I can't imagine how you haven't experienced that. When you stand and you come from the place of I'm for you, I may not understand you, teenagers, I may not agree with you, but I'm for you. I'm trying. My heart is open to you. Receive me, help me out, we'll figure it out together. That is so powerful and so God-driven. Yes. I've seen things work that I could not have imagined, that I could not have dreamed of by just opening my heart and taking a risk. But I preface everything first with the acknowledgement that it's a risk. And we have to be spirit-led and use wisdom when we're taking these risks. Whether it's in a personal relationship, a work environment, or on, on another level. You know? But doing this work personally, as you've heard over and over and over again, is the way that we get to shift our community, our nation, and the world. So what I put out when I'm listening about the war in Ukraine, whether I agree with it or not, what I put out when I'm listening about somebody who did something that I, in my spirit, God, feel is absolutely not okay. Oh, yeah. I have influence with Florida influence. They say they're going to send it for me in the mail. You see, we think yeah, I have an influence matter. with Florida. But I change. They say they're going to send it to me within the billions and billions of people, and I can't possibly matter. I can't possibly make a difference. How many people? You pay, for pay, je dis, yeah, cash, and espèce, or swap a ballon, cut as you want. You may not be put on the news for the difference that you make. But trust me, we all matter because we're all part of the world. And that's, that's our humanness, that's our I don't humanness. have a problem with the, the cash payment, but how much it's going to be. When we feel accepted, when we feel heard, when we feel supported, there's just so much that opens in terms of possibility and creativity and okay. creative expression. You want me? Okay, I'll tell them. The ability to be able to be honest, to be honest. Where's the ladies now? And be loved. Where's the ladies now? No matter what, is one of the most powerful things. Okay. No problem. And we're not as aware of it, I think, as we need to be. It is one of the most healing things that any human being can experience. And really, the truth is that's all we really want as humans. It creates a kind of connection that will withstand any challenge. It creates a kind of connection that will foster respect and understanding, that allows us to be kind even when we disagree. And I dare say that allows us to grow into a world that somehow spirit-led works for everyone. Let's take this into treatment.
My heart seeks the truth. I yearn to feel good about myself, inside myself, in my own skin. My heart yearns for the love and the kindness and the softness and the acceptance to be wrapped in the, the embrace of love to be wrapped in the knowing that everything is okay. My heart yearns for peace, the peace that truly surpasses understanding. And what I know is that I myself, by myself, may not know how to get there, but there is a power and presence that I experience that creates all of life. There is a power and presence that sustains and maintains all of life. And no matter what I do, that power and presence is there for me, within me, expressing. It has put things in place so that the sun rises and sets every day, so that the moon and the stars glow in the evening. It has put things in place so that the rain falls. It has put things in place so that the brooks and the streams and the rivers trickle and the oceans roll. It has put things in place so that there is an abundance of ongoing life. It is expressing this divine presence, call it what you will, is expressing. And what I know is that it expresses in and through and as each one of us. What I know is that it is the way. It provides a way as source and supply to handle, to manage anything in this humanness that needs to be handled and managed. And so first and foremost, I turn within to spirit. And I open my mind and heart. And I allow myself to be spirit-led. I may not know, I may not understand, but I allow myself to be divinely guided and I follow that guidance. So I am guided as to what to say, when to say, how to say it, and what not to say or do or be or have. The power and presence that I call God is forever expressing and forever guiding me in love, in light. And so I trust. Well. I trust that no matter the confusion, no matter the situation, no matter the mess that we humans create, there is a power and presence that can heal it all, that can undo it all, that can shift it all, that can change it all. And this power and presence lives and moves and has its being in me, in each one of us. He's using and so his heart to monitor choose to open my mind and heart and to be divinely led, to be divinely inspired and to be an avenue for love to express, an avenue for kindness to express, an avenue for peace to express, an avenue for healing, an avenue that shows someone you are not alone. I don't agree with you, but you are not alone. I will stand for you. I will stand by you as long as you do no harm. And when you do no harm, I will do my best to forgive you. When you do harm, I will do my best to forgive you. The intelligence, the brilliant intelligence, that is spirit, God creator, expresses in and through and as each one. Its kingpins are love. Its kingpins are freedom. Its kingpins are joy and creativity and kindness and the ongoing, ever unfolding creative expansion of life. This is the truth. I am grateful for it. I am grateful for this awareness. I am grateful for this knowing. And I am grateful for the courage to allow myself to be used. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I release this word into the law knowing that it is the truth and it is just simply God expressing. Please close with me. And so it is.